Hello and good evening. This is Jeff Blair, Dealer Support Manager at Life Ionizers. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We'll get started at this time. Tonight we've got a little bit different topic uh, to discuss, something we haven't had a lot of discussions on, but it's a very important topic. Um, I'm thrilled to have us joined by Dr. Kopko, who is our Chief Science Advisor and does a lot of research for us and has done a lot of research for our company. Tonight he's going to talk and touch upon really the issue of water overall and the fact that this is a resource that is, is kind of going away and talk about what kind of research and studies have been done to show what are our options as a population on water. And I think it'll be educational and interesting. And I think it does relate to what we all do out there as dealers and customers in society. So at this time, I want to introduce Dr. Kopko to you. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Kopko. And I'll bring this up on the slide as those of us that are signed in can see as well. Dr. Kopko is a board certified doctor of chiropractic medicine with a subspecialty in sports medicine. He became the first certified chiropractic sports physician in San Diego County and the 90th in the world. He is a nutritionist and a dark field microscopist with over 28 years experience. He can say that word better than I can. It's microscopist is the better way to say that. And Dr. Kopko has also served as our chief science advisor for well over the last 10 years. Um, We've been very thrilled to have him work alongside with us, and he's provided us with invaluable research. And with no further ado, I'm going to turn over the table to Dr. Kopko. Before I have him get started, everybody, again, is in listen-only audio mode. But at the end of this presentation, you're welcome either now or at the end to type in on your toolbar where it says chat on your toolbar menu. And you can type in your questions. We will field those at the end of tonight's presentation, but you won't be able to, to speak them in because we want to keep the audio quality high so everybody can hear Dr. Kopko. And thank you again for joining us. And at this time, I'll turn the floor over to Dr. Kopko. Good evening, and uh, it's a pleasure again to speak to you. We're going to talk about water and basically how thirsty the world has become. I'd like to open this with a thought, and that is the water that the dinosaurs drank millions of years ago is the same water that falls as rain today. It's never been destroyed. It's recycling through the hydrologic water cycle. I think that's really kind of interesting that the same water molecules just keep moving around. And we're going to talk about the scarcity of water, how some countries are dealing with it, and what we can as a people help preserve this, this precious element on this planet. And I would like us at Life Ionizers to become part of this movement towards how people think about, use, and manage water. And I think one of the greatest things that we do at Life Ionizers in reference to having people at home now basically producing their own alkaline ionized microclustered water is the elimination of all these plastic bottles. Amen. There's probably billions of them produced each year. And it's my understanding it, it, it's a horrendously low percentage that are even recycled. I, I, I believe it's like less than 10%. For most of us, that's probably hard to believe because if we use one uh, with something else that was in it, probably other than water, we're going to recycle it. I think a lot of these uh, plastic bottles just get trashed. And then, of course, there's the whole issue of BPA, and it goes on and on and on. I think the, the other special thing that we do at Life Ionizers is that when you have people utilize these pre-filters, they're taking heavy metals and other toxins out of the water permanently. And I think that's a great thing. We're, we're in essence, down line cleaning water. So those are, those are two very important things in reference to the, to the uh, uh, status of, of, of the water on the planet. 
I'd like to turn now to some statistics that you might find interesting. These are things that you could include in your, your own newsletters that go out to your clientele or if you're doing any, any uh, uh, informational talks. And that is that 97% of the water on Earth is salty. It's, in its present form, it's undrinkable. 2% of the fresh water is locked up in snow and ice. That leaves 1% that is readily available uh, for consumption. And that, that 1% is, is comprised of surface water, which is lake, rivers, reservoirs, and groundwater. Now there's a, an interesting uh, fact, geographical fact. There is a lake in Russia called Lake Baikal, B-A-I-K-A-L. It's over 2,400 feet deep. It's fresh water. It happens to be the largest reservoir of fresh water on the planet. As a matter of fact, of that 1% that's available for use, it comprises 20% of that water. And I guarantee you, in, in terms of geo, a, a geopolitical picture, that, that is going to become a very, very important uh, issue sometime, and maybe sometime soon. Now, in reference to some other statistics, by the year 2025, there'll be a total of 1.8 billion people which are going to have difficulty obtaining water. That's a lot of people. And keep in mind that the planetary population increases by approximately 83 million people per year. So water use, water consumption becomes an issue because unfortunately the people that need the water the most are, are the people who can least afford to produce the technology to even get it. Let's talk a little bit about water consumption. Now the average American uses about 100 gallons a day. That would be both for personal use and indirectly through commercial use, products that you would consume that had used water. The world's poorest people use less than five gallons a day. Big difference there between the two. As a matter of fact, U.S. swimming pools alone lose 150 billion gallons of water through evaporation each year. Two billion gallons a day are used to irrigate U.S. golf courses. These kinds of practices have got to change if we want to help out the, the issue of, of water on a planetary basis. And, and there is some good news about that. Uh, I believe it's the potato chip company, Frito-Lay. They figured out that potatoes themselves have a lot of water content in them. So they are actually recycling the water from the potato in the process of making a potato chip to help lower you know, their consumption of water. Uh, I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, some other ideas are that uh, rainwater collection is becoming a bigger thing in a lot of states. And in Denver, for example, if you have an average roof of about 2,000 square feet, you can recover in a year about 16,575 gallons of water, which in Denver, that, that yield is approximately 65% of how much water you would need to take care of your land, uh, an average landscape yard. Wow. So rainwater collection uh, is a good thing. And uh, 
I think uh, speaking as a, 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 a San Diegan, we're, we're very poor at this. I mean, my, my home doesn't even have uh, rainwater uh, spouts. Is that what they're called? Gutters. For Gutters, the most, yeah. The rest of the country, but yeah. Yeah. It doesn't either. And I, I'm going to get them put on and uh, uh, get a uh, container. I've seen these things on the Internet. They're huge plastic containers and start collecting some rainwater. Some other good news is that there are countries like Ecuador, who happens to be the first nation on earth to put a, a right, Rights of Nature Act in its constitution. And what that means is that rivers and forests are not being looked at as simply property, but they, they maintain an inherent right to flourish. So in other words, a citizen in Ecuador can now file a suit on behalf of, of an injured watershed. Uh, much different than in the United States. You'd have to go through the government, governmental bureaucracy, through the EPA. In that country, you can now file a suit directly on behalf of a polluted river or lake or watershed, etc. It's kind of an exciting thing. Water costs keep rising, and uh, most people should be motivated in San Diego to maybe start reclaiming or recapturing some rainwater because we happen to have some of the highest water costs in the entire U.S., which is uh, we come out at approximately $1.65 per 100 gallons. New York is about $0.80, cents, Denver is about 53 There are some other countries where water is more expensive, and there are some countries where it's considerably less. As a matter of fact, in Ireland, the whole water bill issue is all incorporated. Uh, it's paid for basically when you pay your property taxes. So when you pay your property taxes, that includes any water costs, which I think is a, a, a better way to do it. On a global level, when water is dammed up or put into reservoirs, we're now finding that that not only disturbs the ecosystem, but here's a very interesting fact. And I had run across this once before, and I, I, I found it again. And I initially, uh, when I wrote an article, Water on the Global Level, which is in the ebook. I had mentioned that large reservoirs or man-made dams was disturbing the axis of rotation of the planet. And in fact, it comes down to a place in China. The weight of, uh, of these three large gorge, gorges and reservoirs in China are actually tilting the Earth's axis by nearly an inch. And if you think about if you think about the ramifications of that, uh, water becomes even more important if it's actually changing the rotation of the Earth because it's being dammed up. And as a matter of fact, in China, they have uh, destroyed so much water through their industrialization projects. So much surface water has been destroyed that they are now going up into the Himalayans to try to recapture glacial water, and they're running it off. And this is creating even another problem, because that area of the world, which is known as the Tibetan Plateau, is actually now being referred to as the third pole. You've got your North Pole, South Pole, and it's considered the third pole because of all the frozen water that's up there, lakes, rivers, and mountains. As this melts, it, it supplies fresh water for nearly one-third of the world's population. And that's why it's referred to as a third pole. And the Chinese now are going up in there and getting this, uh, this they're, they're creating a huge pipeline to get this water because they have uh, polluted and destroyed so much of their surface water. And, and that becomes a very, once again, geopolitical problem. 
Uh, lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about all of these, the, these issues are now being referred to as you've heard of, 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 of different types of footprints that, that when you're hiking, you, 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 you want to, you know, whatever you, you take in, you want to take out, you don't want to leave a big footprint on where you've been. Well, it's referred to as a water footprint. And people are now becoming, once again, more conscious about how they think about, use, and manage water. And this is in the news a lot. And I think that as a company that is out to make better water for water consumption, we can use this awareness to then talk about, you know, well, what kind of water are you actually drinking and bringing it all back home. And with that, I'm open for any kind of question that you have about this. And remember, there are no stupid questions. Good point. And again, gang, how you can ask your questions at this point in time is the audio lines are, are not available to open up on these calls to keep the sound quality high, but you can type in your questions on that toolbar that popped up. At the bottom of your toolbar, there's a little section called chat. You can click on the plus symbol to the left of the chat box. That'll open up a text box and simply type in your question. And again, we're talking with Dr. Peter Kopko, who is our chief, chief science advisor. And this is a great topic to talk about. This webinar will be recorded. And you'll have the ability to forward this on to anyone that you'd like out there. And I thank you for joining us tonight.